Welcome to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people, where we aspire to gather all of the knowledge magic has to offer, a place to illuminate and demystify all things magical. Welcome, 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 my most magical people. Literally, come hell, high water, water spouts, we're getting this episode out to you guys on time. We're here tonight. We're recording a little bit late, but that's okay. We've got a fun one planned for you guys today. Anyone who's been following along, you know that we've had a string of interviews that we've been doing with some super, super magical people. But one of my favorite people in the whole world and one of the most magical people that I have ever met is my co-host, one of my co-hosts, Adriana. She has a whole host of things that she can claim as her own, and we're just so grateful to have her here as one of the magical creators of Magical Aspirations. Go ahead and tell the people hello, Adriana. Hey! (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, and as you guys know, we've always got Reverend Raven here as well. We're going to dive deep into... Oh, Reverend Raven is at the beach this weekend, and she actually saw a raven today on the beach, and that I don't think I have ever seen before. So we're going to dive in really deep with a bunch of questions for Adriana. Um, We're going to kind of focus around the ancestors and mediumship and all of the things that make Adriana magical. So I want to go ahead and bust right out of the gate with Adriana. Go ahead and tell all the people, what are you studying right now that's really, really got your heart chakra like lit up? Mm, so definitely the birds. I love the birds. They have been so fantastic in their language, showing me their medicine, the feathers down to how they um, collect together as like groups and their migration, just like everything about them has been really fascinating to me. And I am so excited to dive even more because I've just never been like a bird person, but now I am. So that's the biggest thing that I'm studying. And I think, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, any bird in particular? Um, really, all of them. Jk, jk. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, specifically focusing on kind of the, of course, your normal neighborhood birds like cardinals, blue jays, mockingbirds, um, herons. Mm-hmm. I did not expect to see herons here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but we have them. Um, also, getting to know the crows. Yes, of course, we love them. Um, And of course, the different hawk species we have around here, too. Oh, very cool. I did. I meant to tell you this much earlier. Um, The woodpecker is something important (gasps) for you. Oh, Uh, yes. (laughs) Yes. Does that mean anything to you now? I I have no words, but yes. Um, The woodpecker has been such a like a hey a reminder a lightheartedness um sign for me and almost like this don't take things too seriously type of sign so whenever it pops up it always reminds me to just like laugh enjoy and kind of be in the moment um so i thank you for bringing that back yes yes oh you're so, welcome i yeah, super funny right, i saw i saw with pecker this morning we were in the ocala national forest in the middle of florida uh, which is a swamp ecosystem in Florida, uh, very similar to where I'm from in Louisiana. Uh, but there was a badass woodpecker this morning that I saw. So it just uh, popped into my mind as a oh. message for you, Adriana. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, maybe the woodpecker, the woodpecker might be for all of us because as mm. I was finishing editing our very last episode, I'm pretty sure I sent you guys the picture of this wicked huge woodpecker that just like all of a sudden flew into my backyard um and adriana as you and i were speaking the other day there were these two little woodpeckers that came and were just hanging out at my uh bird feeder together so fascinating ladies i'm gonna have to do some research on that Mm, and you i know you're gonna come up with something juicy because you are the animal communicator both of y'all are like that is true (laughs) 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 
I'm so glad we recorded that. <laughs> Uh, Reverend Ray oh, how natural funny. habitat, couple glasses of wine. <laughs> <Right. in there. laughs> oh, Miss Becky, you got any questions for Adriana to jump off on? Oh yeah, I really want to ask this question. Um, this is about the mediumship uh, aspect and your skills and talents there. I really want to know at what point did you realize that this was a skill that you had and had access to? Mm. good question Mm -hmm. very good question and I have to give like a disclaimer every single time somebody has asked this question my answer changes because things just start popping up into my memory um but you know retrospect is 2020 and I think that Things started being a little fuzzy around the time once my great grandmother passed away, which was back in 2008. Yes. Um, So I was young. I was a young little whippersnapper. Um, But then back around like 2016, things started getting really sped up. I was having these like dreams but then I was also having these really intense feelings of like someone being around me but like nobody was there um and then I just kept going deeper and deeper and asking more questions googling uh like a mad person and for a long very long time I thought that maybe it's schizophrenia and that sent me on a whole nother like black hole of information but that didn't quite fit that didn't feel right um and even after talking to a couple professionals they were like no i don't think this is the case so i started um i came upon one youtube video that changed the whole game for me um and it was by this woman her name is genesis and her youtube channel is the naked medium And she had this one video talking about um, your dreams. So what are your dreams trying to tell you? And from there, I was hooked and I started diving into my mediumship. So that was a long-winded way to say, uh, I guess, 2016, for real, for real. How do you really uh, (laughs) trigger something that real quick, I'm going to cut you off. I'm sorry. But that so many of us have um, instances when we were young that uh connect us to the spiritual world and we kind of dismiss it because we feel like it's like weird or it's bad or Mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. and um but i really feel like a lot of people maybe in the audience can relate to that that it's not like invalidated that we have those experiences of connecting to the spirit world when we're young Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Mm -hmm. how did you work through that you said that you were kind of concerned about uh schizophrenia I had a similar experience where I was concerned about having uh some psychiatric disorders whenever I started uh, realizing my spiritual gifts yeah and it's it's so easy to because some of the symptoms like just line right up um on top of just the whole collective and especially us millennials having such a high, a higher rise of mental illness um, or just being aware of it. So it was really difficult for me to work through. I talked to no one. Um, It was really even hard for me to talk to the therapist I was seeing at that time. And I just felt like if I had to describe the feeling in my body, it felt like I was carrying like this ton of cement block on my chest and I was just carrying it around everywhere. So it was not like a fun experience. (laughs) Um, As many people say like, yeah, just tap in, talk to spirit. Like it's, it wasn't that fun for me, um, which is why I do the work that I do. But um, a lot of it had to do with just me getting quiet and trying out these different exercises and seeing where that goes. And then I did a lot of, cause I'm an Aries. So like, I need to see it sometimes to believe it. And I would actually give the universe a task, give my spirits a task and then have them show up with the confirmation for me to believe like, okay, this is like an actual real thing. Um, and just like really unexplainable experiences. Um, so for example, I had, um, 
I had found this blue jay feather and I took it and I was like, oh, this is so pretty, but I'm just going to give it back to nature. Um, and I placed it on the ground and I kid you not, two days later, two days later, I found a blue jay feather in my motherfucking jean pocket. In the pocket. Where did oh, that shit. come from? Where did that come from? What, why, how, I don't know, I don't know. And so it was like experiences like that that made me realize like, okay, I'm not schizophrenic. Um, my mental health was improving the more I opened myself up. And so that also was happening alongside me um, tapping into my gifts. That I really, I really relate to that you know very much like becky was saying that like when you really start to delve into this world it can not only do you feel crazy enough but we've certainly touched on this before that sometimes there's just such a stigma that kind of comes along with that um mm. and it's really prevalent i feel like for people who are trying to understand the information that like especially with i've done a ton of reading about mediumship that like you come across people who for lack of a better term, like they're almost kind of snobby about it. Like mm -hmm. it's this like kind of withheld information that like, if you're not born with the gift, you can't own it. <laughs> um, Cause I have, I feel some very deep draw to mediumship. And like, I've certainly had some instances where like, obviously you know that you're connecting with someone. Um, How do you receive your information? Like, is it something that you see? Like, do you just get like these knowings? Like I'm really fascinated about like, would it, what it's like to you because I know it's different for everybody yeah um so for me it's a mixed bag of things it is number one this emotional experience when mediumship happens oh, mediumship happens um but when spirit shows up I feel the emotions of what's going on with them I may also feel the emotions of what's going on with the person they're connected with um and then also I just I'm such a visual person so I'll get like pictures and images and it'll be like a movie is playing in my head if I had to describe it that's exactly what it looks like this fuzzy movie with these images that I have to like draw connection to. Um, and then also I can just like speak and things will just come out of my mouth about it may connect. I may say a phrase that was directly connected to your grandfather, or I may just pick up on a name or sometimes accents have been coming out a lot more. Um, and that's really fascinating. So sometimes I'll pick up on an accent and it'll kind of slide out. So visual, emotional. Um, and then recently spirit has been so, um, like the body, like if, for example, if someone was having, if they died of a heart attack, like they will show that to me in my own body. Like I'll feel a pain in my chest and I'll be like, okay, there's something going on on the chest. And then they'll get a lot more specific. So it starts off like a really big funnel. And then the more I tune into a particular sensation or picture or word, then I get more messages opening up from that. So then it starts to peel like an onion and you eventually get to like this root message. Okay, I got a couple of questions to spin off of that. But the thing that Spirit <laughs> is really leading me to ask you right now is how do you protect yourself whenever you're mm. going through these kind of experiences? Like that seems really heavy if all of a sudden you start feeling chest pains like while you're trying to communicate with someone on the other side. Mm. Mm. It really, it differs depending on where I'm at or what I'm doing. So when I used to do mediumships down um, at, in the French Quarter, I would have to like, my room was set up a particular way. I had to have a glass of water because water is so helpful if you're channeling spirit or doing readings because water is a conduit of energy. And so it's like, you know, spirits not only pulling from your aura, they're also pulling from the natural aura of water. So I highly recommend that for folks. Um, I also was in a freaking crystal sore. So a bitch was already protected just off of that. Um, 
But then when I'm at home or I go to do a mediumship reading, I have like certain things that I put on my body, whether it's an oil or a scarf or a bracelet or something that is specifically meant for protection. Um, and then a lot of the times once I'm done with the session, I have to I have to find a way to just like zen out because if I continue to carry that, it can be really detrimental on my health. And I saw that during my first six months of doing mediumship readings. And I was just, I was so unhealthy and just tired and lethargic. And it was just, it was really bad. Um, But once I actually started protecting myself, things got a lot easier. And I will straight up tell spirit, like, don't drain all of my energy. Don't do that. Um, And I'll, call in my angels. I'll call in my guides to kind of put like this wall, this barrier around me so that whoever's spirit wants to connect isn't just, you know, immediately sucking and draining me dry. So I know that's like really all over the place, but it, I mean it when I say it just depends on where I'm at or in what I'm doing. That, so that, so like right now, for example, like you're in a safe space, like you're with people who you trust, like right now, mm-hmm. is there like messages that are like coming through or like your guards up and you can't, like it, because you're not intending to do it, is something mm-hmm. not coming through or does it mm-hmm. depend on the person? It really just depends, honestly. And most of the time I do have my wall up, but <laughs> spirit gonna do what spirit wants to do, so things will just pop in. And for the most part, I'll just like ignore it. Um, Because if I were to be consistently giving messages, I don't know how long I would live. Like that is ridiculous to me to be channeling and just to be that open. But maybe for somebody else it works. But I think a lot of people think that like Monica the Medium or Teresa Caputo um, and Tyler Henry, like they're fantastic mediums, amazing, but TV has made it seem like they're just going around giving readings every single day, every minute, and that is just not reality at all. And I think it's really important to make that distinction just because of so much of what the media, for a lot of the things that we talk about on this podcast, that the media portrays as crazy or silly or whatever. Mm. Um, I think it's really important to point out how draining it really can be. Mm -hmm. Like whether you protect yourself or not, you know, Mm -hmm. like I think that's, that's, that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten like, you know, a typical, like so movie question, I guess, like, has there ever been like an overwhelming message from the other side you felt compelled to give someone you didn't know? Um, that's a good question. What? <laughs> um, I was about to say no, not really, but then was gently nudged, bitch, stop lying. So yes, um, this actually happened with my own, <laughs> my own family. My grandmother actually, I so this would have been her mother. So my great grandmother had come through while I was on the phone with my grandmama, and I was like. Oh, uh, I don't know how to do this. What? Come on, Spirit, help me out. But I just had to frame the message that she was saying as a way, like more of a question, like a guiding question for my grandmother. And I was just like, oh, yeah, grandmama, like what did uh, Granny Grand like to do? And oh, yeah, is she, she like this? And then just like telling like this kind of story instead of just explicitly saying like, so you have a a female spirit here on the other side. I didn't put it that type of way um, because I just haven't, I hadn't broke that barrier with my grandmama yet around me basically talking to spirits. So that was like one of the first experiences. Yeah. So I actually had something uh, kind of similar happen to me uh, maybe a couple hours ago. Like uh, Annalisa said, I'm in Florida on vacation with my family and I have a few members of my family that are really involved in a Christian church Mm. and they all know about the podcast. And I was like, Hey, yeah, we're going to go to dinner, but I have to be back so I can record. And they're like, Oh yeah. What are you talking about? So I'm like, yeah, we're going to talk about mediumship and talking to spirits and things like that. And they just kind of like, look at me like, uh, well, then we start telling a story about something being like haunted or spooky or whatever. And they were like, okay, you think that's speaking. You're somebody that talks to spirits on the other side. Like, how does that work? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Um, but it was kind of cool because there's so many people in my family that we all have a lot of different beliefs, but at the end of the day, like, I know this is something we're going to talk about later, but we all have a very strong connection to our ancestors Mm -hmm. and people who have passed on that were important to us in our lives. And Mm -hmm. it's like, kind of no matter what your spiritual beliefs or what you subscribe to with your spirituality, you have some kind of connection to those who are no longer here in the physical form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could not have said that better myself. Mm. I love So that. then my next question to you is like, whenever you were starting to realize that this was happening, like, how did you develop this skill more? I got really lucky. Um, and I started a, what I joined a mediumship circle, um, by Nicole Guillaume, the, of guiding echoes. And I was in that mediumship circle for probably three years, I want to say. Um, and we met twice, was it twice a month? Um, sometimes weekly, just depending on, you know, her schedule. But for the most part, we were at least meeting twice a month and we were working on different skills and it was a small circle. So we were all able to like really tap in, give good feedback. We were practicing. She brought in guests and she just really introduced us to different sides of mediumship. And that was the best experience I could have ever had as I was developing my mediumship. And I always tell people they should join mediumship circles because there is nothing like being in a group of people who are working on the same skill. They're not judging you on the fact that you can talk to spirit and feel spirit. um, And you get to practice this skill in real life. So that I highly, highly, highly recommend that um, not everybody circle is the same. So some of these people are out here scamming, but when you find a good circle, it is absolutely priceless. So that, that is how lucky I was. That's really cool. Um, just to be able to find a a community of people that you can connect with and Mm -hmm. to build that skill. Um, I feel like trust, um, is Mm -hmm. very important whenever you're developing any kind of a spiritual skill or any skill in, in, you know, in general, um, Mm -hmm. but in any kind of spiritual work that I have been working on, like once you can get to know the people that you're practicing with and you can trust them, then you can trust their feedback and know Mm -hmm. that they are, they're going to help you to develop yourself in the way that you're supposed to be. It's all spirit led. Like Mm -hmm. you said earlier, you Mm -hmm. know, you're not just doing the thing because it's like, oh, it, wouldn't it be cool if I could like talk to spirits? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a, like a thing about like glory or like, oh yeah, I'm so cool because I can talk to spirits. It's like, oh, well, I'm being guided to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm being led to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's quite, quite special, quite special. And I, I do wish more people would tap into it. And I think we do naturally, like you were saying, all of us being connected to our ancestors and since somebody on the other side, even if it's just a pet, um, that's mediumship. That's because you're talking to a spirit that's not still here. So that leads me to my next question, Adriana. <laughs> I told you I didn't that they were going to tell me if it was time. <laughs> Girl, I want to talk about the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, do folks, it. let me give you a little background information. Um, as we're talking about like trust circles and all of these things, so our actual next guest that we're going to be having um, in a couple of episodes is our tarot teacher, Michelle. After our tarot class ended, we went on a bender of, I don't know, maybe for at least a year or so, I'd have to say after. All of the people from the tarot class, we would normally gather, normally at Michelle's house, um, and we would just straight up have psychic club, and we would talk about all kind of cool shit. We would do all of these like group meditations, and it was a big room of trust. Um, Many years down the road, Adriana and I started to have a conversation where all of a sudden she just drops this little fun nugget about, um, girl, let me tell you about the dragons one day. And then who knows what the conversation went into after that. So, Adriana... Tell me about the dragons, girl. <laughs> oh, man. It's really weird to hear people tell me stuff that I've told them because I'm just like, me? I said that out loud. <laughs> you did. You, and I remembered. I bet you thought you slipped that little bit in the conversation. You were probably like, oh, she didn't even hear. But I heard and I remembered. 
Okay, so dragons, dragons, dragons. Um, this was a very interesting find. I didn't expect to get involved with dragons. So in 2020, I had this absolutely wild and intense dream of this dragon just like pop. I was minding my business, minding my little human business. And I had this dream of this dragon coming in and just basically blaring, I have come for my daughter. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Who are you? What are you coming from? And, you know, I was just like running around just like everybody else was. And this dragon just kept following me everywhere I went. And so I turned around and looked at the dragon. I was like, me? And then from there, this dragon just like wrapped me up and took me. And then the dream was over. So I was like, okay, cool. That was that was awesome. That was like Avatar in real life. Love that. Um, but then from there, I started getting these intense hints to look into the dragons, look into the dragons. So all of 2021 was me tapping in and having these like deep meditations. And it was so, it was like one of the more disciplined um, guides who I've worked with since. Um, because I had to do them at certain times or like when I'm in a certain mood and the dragons really taught me how to stop relying on external validation and the dragons came to teach me so much about healing my own self um, especially like the symbols that they gave me the wisdom about the elements that they taught me the the colors and like ley lines in the world, all of that was just like stuff I could easily look up maybe, but I had no drive to do so. And it was the dragons that really brought me in into that. So I love talking about the dragons and I think each experience is different. Um, of course, as all things. So yeah. Well, I find that so fascinating because, like I said, this is something you mentioned in a conversation, God, probably maybe close to a year ago or so now, and I haven't been led to ask you about it until tonight. Um, the mm. lessons that you said that they taught you, like mm. those are things that I have to imagine you have to have really solid to push through on like really good mediumship skills, like mm. to stop looking for outside validation and like to know who you are, to like trust that's where I falter and mm -hmm. pretty much anything spirit based is like, I, like you said, like, I, like you are, I'm an Aries and I really need to like see it, touch it, feel it, mm -hmm. experience it sometimes for it to stick. And I have a lot of trouble with like non tangible proof mm -hmm. that like this shit's real, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's, that very reason is the number one reason why I started getting interested in them the first place because I was having some, some other dreams, some other <laughs> um, intuitive dreams that I was like, I have no proof for this. I don't know what to do with this. And then that's when the dragon started showing up because I was getting so stuck on the tarot cards or the fire, the candles, the going to get readings. I was getting stuck and hung up in that. And it was, literally stunting my growth and when the dragons come in and they're like hey this is who we are you get names you get stories you get experiences and you're like oh shit and then this the information they told me when i go to look it up i'm like bitch this shit was right what how 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 so i challenge everybody for that very reason if you are stuck on the tangible, challenge yourself to tap into the intangible, challenge yourself to do something that you can't necessarily touch, hear, smell, and see. Something that just popped up in my mind while you're talking about this is how much of the answers are within us. Like when we are mm -hmm. looking, we're looking externally for clues and answers and things like that, um, the answers are actually inside and it takes sometimes something external for us to be like, Oh, wait, 
I knew this answer already. It's like re-remembering the information. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like seeing the symbol of the dragon made you remember, oh, I am a dragon. I mm -hmm. have this mm -hmm. information inside of me. I don't need to have a, a picture on a card or whatever because the information is in here. Mm -hmm. And like we've talked about this before, all of those things are tools for our toolbox. Mm. They, are, they aren't the answer itself. You know, the cards or the candle or the fire, or whatever, those aren't the answers. Those are clues and tools to help us find the answers that we already have within. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. It is wildly. Uh, mm -hmm radical for us to dare to tap into that self-knowledge because it just unlocks so much for us and ah, I just wish everybody knew that wish everybody believed that well that's why we're talking about it girl <laughs> <laughs> so that's I think we might be starting to get to the segue into the ancestors um, Adriana, you got anything else you want to say, or Becky, is any, there anything? I'm sure the mediumship will continue um, to come up, but is there any other particular points that we wanted to discuss before we kind of shift a little bit? Hmm. I guess um, if you are interested in mediumship, just do it. Um, look it up, research it, and know that mediumship isn't just about connecting with people who have died. You can do mediumship with animals and plants. And I think that nature is already a natural, nature is a natural, te <laughs> natural teacher. And so you might find it a whole lot more easier to communicate with these animals and plants and crystals and other things um and then you'll be able to work your way into people mediumship yeah i think that's something that i have gotten hung up on for a while like when i hear the term mediumship i think it's something like high up high in high in the sky high in the sky kind of deal like i i'm not a medium like that's above my pay grade kind of deal <laughs> but you know like whenever i think about it it's like well i am connecting with the spirits of the animals and my ancestors and the plants and things like that actually on a daily basis so mm -hmm. if that's how you define mediumship i actually am already doing it so i think for people listening out there like don't doubt yourself and your skills like mm -hmm. if you feel a connection then you have a connection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to those messages that are coming through. Someone or something is telling you something for a reason and listen to that message. It's yeah. valid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't invalidate it because you feel like, well, I'm not a medium. You mm -hmm. Know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or yours doesn't look the same way as somebody else's. Right. Mm -hmm. Your experience is just as valid as someone else's. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, realize that, validate mm -hmm. it in listen to that message that whatever whomever is trying to share with you that that right there mm -hmm. yeah definitely i think that's really really important mm. like it's not i know we talk about some like big big things sometimes but like it's just really so simple when you get down down to it you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well i think the ancestors are ready ready to be talked about got them warmed up here you guys <laughs> yep they said all right guys it's been it's been a few minutes hey. let's get into the juice you let's done? get into the juice <laughs> so adriana we'll just as a jumping off point what's your favorite way to connect with your ancestors Ooh, um damn that's a really good question ah uh, dancing dancing i love it dancing i am not <laughs> i'm not a great dancer so don't think i'm over here just like giving a golden globe type of uh action but it is such a 
freeing experience and action to just like dance to some music and to like really feel music. And I've just had some of the best experiences of connecting with my ancestors by just dancing alone and just like wildly expressing myself. Um, So that's definitely number one. And number two is always and forever will be food, 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 food. <sighs> see how see how I even said that food. <laughs> so not very surprisingly, when you get three old friends who just so happen to be super witchy together and we start talking about the ancestors, the conversation can get a little lengthy. We decided to split this guy into two rather than editing out some of the really good information that we cover. Come back next Tuesday to tune into part two of our interview with Adriana. Thank you for listening and stay magical. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Magical Aspirations. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Magical Aspirations to keep up with the latest and the greatest from Annalisa, Adriana, and Reverend Raven. And to join in on the Magical Aspirations conversations. Come check out our website, MagicalAspirations.com, to find bonuses from our guests, our Magical Aspirations blog, and to reach out to our magical hosts with questions, comments, reviews, or ideas for future episodes. We are so grateful for each and every one of you listening. Thank you again, and as always, stay true to your magic.